Uh, this video is going to be a video on how to rebuild a Ford Duratec engine. This one's come out of a Fiesta ST. Let's try to do that. Tell you what, that angle is really hard to get. Hang on, but never mind. Uh, this engine I bought off eBay. It was taken out of its previous car because it was burning oil. Pretty standard sort of problem with these engines right away from <clears throat> back when they were first introduced into Fords, mainly in the Mark III Mondeos. We was getting MOT failures with them when they were doing rings after sort of three, four years. And it was even people a bit frustrated that they bought a new car and then the engine's fucked after four years of ownership. So that was always entertaining trying to explain to them. But anyway, it's beside the point. Hopefully this video will give you a bit of an insight on how to rebuild these engines, what you're looking for, and yeah. Let's see what's going on really. Let's see it again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you onto my camera now, on my action camera, and then I'm gonna try and chop it up so you don't spend loads of time looking at me fucking about or looking at my back, which will probably end up happening loads. So, well, I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna crack on with it. So, let's get got the phone from over where I had it plugged into my radio. Um, so it's all timed up now. I'll show you where it times up and I'll, what I'll do is I'll show you a diagram on our technical data system that we use. We use uh, all our data pretty good most of the time. It's good if you're doing time about stuff like that, it gives you all your general sort of technical specifications, all that sort of shit that you use in the motor trade on a day-to-day -day basis. So right away from torque settings to full codes and timing data for stuff like this. So this is where you can see the camshaft goes, gets locked off there. So there's a groove there and a groove there. This bar just slots in. Sometimes it does need a bit of a tap, technical tap. Get that angle, it's fucking so annoying. Let me see if I swap you around whilst I'm watching you. Is it gonna go? No, it's not, fuck it. So yeah, you can see the bar there, where it goes in. Sometimes you have to give it a tap in. Sometimes the timer can just be a little bit out with chain stretch or belt stretch. It can just be a bit of a fuck about. You'll probably see me on a GoPro camera, or not GoPro, action camera, knobbing about just trying to make sure that it's all nice and right. I've got me set up. So. And then that's obviously the top half, that's the camshaft, and then the crankshaft pins in here. So what the timing specification says is, you get it to 45 degrees before TDC, whack that pin in, turn it over till it locks, and then your back here should all be lined up. So I've had me, is that showing it? Oh, I think I it's not showing it. I've had my trusty extension in there, just to give me an idea of where TDC is. And um, yeah, so we're good to go now. Next up is pull the crankshaft pulley off, pull the timing chain cover off, right around there. Pull the pulley off, pull the cover off, and then we'll be able to de-adjust the tensioner, whip the chain off, and then whip the head off. So I'm gonna go and put you back, carry on listening to some music. Today's choice is Mill and Colin, because they're pretty good. And there's a couple of songs of them that I really like at the moment. Uh, they're doing it for me. You'll probably hear it in the background. Maybe, maybe not. YouTube might get the eyes with us. I'm sure Men and Colin won't because they're pretty badass. But, right, see you in a sec. So, timing cover is off now. Uh, really simple to stay. It's a case of buzz the bottom pulley off so that you can get cover over the top of it. You can see it. One sec. You can see there. 
That hole there is where the crankshaft goes though. So with that bottom pulley off, you can pull the cover off the top of it. There's just loads of bolt hold, bolts holding it on. It's pretty simple. If you've got a leaking gasket, really not that much of an issue to change it. But again, wash in there, measure the train. There's your bolts down the hill. As you'll see, loads of them. You can get that light so this blood lights aren't in the uh, instead of looking on me so you can see them. But yeah, so that was really simple, just a two-minute job. Um, I should move you around so you can have a quick look to see what's going on. So camshaft sprockets then come down to there and that's the tensioner you can see how it puts pressure on the chain there and then that's the crankshaft pulley so now we've done that we'll just uh, take the tensioner off take the tensioner out of the chain buzz the two pulleys off I was going to show you but I'll just show you uh, and then pull the chain off and then pull the head off. Well, pull the cams out, pull the head off. Very simple. Just a quick one on this one. So, timing chains off. Simple, really. And ready to go. So, you can see that's all off there. I've marked my cam shafts. Because. This could be sat in the box for a couple of weeks, so I just want to make sure I know where exactly everything's going. I've also marked all my caps as well. It's something I'd like to do. Uh, I know some people probably don't. I say some people probably don't care, but it was just the way I was taught when I was a kid, so I just carry on doing it now. Don't hurt. I know where they come from, and if something goes back where it come from, it's probably going to help it, probably not going to hurt it, so if you don't like it, I don't fucking care, it's the way I was brought up, and uh, guys who have been doing this shit for a, a lot longer than most people have, so yeah. Next step is whip those cams out quickly, and pull the head off. I have noticed though that my camera has stopped recording, which is a bit of a ball ache, so you're going to miss some, but to be honest, I don't think it's going to make that much odds. Because if you didn't see it coming apart, you'll see it on the flip side going back together again. Or I've got another one of these to do as well. So, well, I've already stripped one down. You might have seen that video, you might not have done. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet because I pulled it apart and cylinder, one of the cylinders was completely melted. So I wanted to do a, just a rebuild video with, well, not even going to say a rebuild, of, this is probably classed as more as a refresh than anything of an engine rather than a balls to the wall, new everything. So I think it'll be more helpful to more people if you see just an engine go back together again. So, this is a bit off the point, but you might get to see the bits that have missed on this. To be honest, it's going to be nothing too exciting. Again, probably my arse in front of the camera, but I'm not used to doing this shit. But yeah, cam's out, heads off next. So I shall catch back up with you in a sec. So, heads off now. And surprisingly, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to be. Most of the time with stuff like this, they sort of go glazed, and you can see where the ore is in them. And burning through it but if I show you quickly now it just doesn't look like that it just doesn't look as anywhere near as bad as I thought it was gonna be so see the tops of the crowns there they're royally but most of the time you'll get like a, a heavy build up on them when they're burning oil and the same on the head you can see a bit on the valves there so yeah no nowhere near as bad as I thought it was gonna be um, so next step is well, next step is tidy up going because it is about half past eight and I've been here since eight o'clock this morning and I'm hungry and I want my tea. So I think for today that is all and we'll get back to it when I pull the sample fit and pull the rods out. See what's going on in there. But 
for now. See you in a bit.